In this video, I'm going to give you a short explanation of what Node.js is, why we need it, and how to install it. You might wonder why we need Node.js to build an Ember.js web app. I have a few really good reasons. One reason is that for the purposes of this series of videos, it's super easy to install and get up and running. And then once you and I have set it up, we have a lot in common, and operating system differences will be much less of an issue. Another reason Node.js is going to be useful to us is because we're going to use a few tools that depend on it. Those tools will help us move fast and focus on building all the cool stuff we're so excited to build. The last thing we want to worry about is repetitive tasks, right? The last pitch I'll make for Node is that it's a useful tool to get acquainted with. I assume you're someone who's trying to learn about new useful tools to advance your career. Node continues to be a very useful server-side framework, and it's highly likely that you can use it either at work or for personal projects. Okay, so that's enough about why we're using it, but what exactly is Node.js, you ask? Node is a server-side implementation of JavaScript. It can do many of the things you might do with PHP, Java, Python, or Ruby, for example. It can handle web requests and facilitate database queries. I think this is pretty cool because I love working with JavaScript. I understand it really well, and I can quickly express what I want as a programmer using it because it's so easy to work with. In the past, when I needed to write full-stack code for an interactive web app, I might be working with JavaScript on the front end, but inevitably would have to switch context to write server-side code. Switching to another language and thus switching context is a disadvantage. Cognitively speaking, context switching can slow you down or make you lose track of your thoughts. This is especially true when you're working on something as demanding as making a web app. So plus one for Node, since I won't have to switch context when writing my server-side code. That said, I recognize we all are often locked into a certain server-side technology and can't do anything about being required to switch contexts. Also, I'd like to point out that Node.js can be really performant in certain situations. Okay. In our case, we're going to use Node as a development server, but it won't be involved in any server-side logic. Also, I won't go over how to deploy Node.js to production. It actually wouldn't be necessary for what we're building. The code we make on the front end won't depend on Node.js, so you can run it on any server-side technology you want. The reason is that our code will be only static pages that you can serve up with whatever server-side technology you're most comfortable with. All right, let's get started with Node.js by installing it. These instructions are for a Mac. First, you should go to nodejs.org, as I have here. And once you're there, the best thing to do is just click the big green Install button. That'll start downloading Node. Once it's done downloading, you'll need to install it. On a Mac, you're going to have a package file. So go to wherever you downloaded it. Mine is in my Downloads folder. Or I can just double click on it and go through the prompts to install it. Once Node.js installs successfully, you'll see a prompt with an important message at the very end. It says, make sure that slash USR, which I'll pronounce user, slash local slash bin is in your dollar path. Now, it's highly unlikely that user slash local slash bin isn't in your path variable, but let's make sure just so that things go smoothly for you. You can verify this in the terminal. So open up terminal and then just type echo dollar path in all caps, space, pipe, space, grep, and then slash user slash local slash bin, and hit enter. Make sure you type it exactly as I had there. Don't worry too much about what all this means, but if you see user slash local slash bin highlighted like mine is here in my terminal in red, then you're good to go. If you don't see it, then you have a few extra steps. Type sudo vim slash etsy slash paths. ETC is pronounced etsy in the Linux C community. Next hit enter you'll be prompted to enter your password that you use to log on to your workstation. This opens up a file that you're going to add slash user slash local slash bin to. But if you've never used Vim before, it's a little less straightforward than a text editor. But it isn't all that hard. To enter text, just hit the I key, and that tells Vim that you're going to insert text. And then you can hit the Enter key to create a new line, arrow up or down, whatever works for you. Now type slash user slash local slash bin and then hit the escape key, and that's gonna take it out of insert mode. Now to save your work, hit the colon key, and then the letter W, and then hit enter. The W is to write your file or save it to disk. Now I already have user local bin in there, so I'm gonna delete that one, rewrite that. Now to quit, you hit colon, and then the letter Q, and then enter. Just a few more steps, so hang in there with me. Now close the terminal and open it again. We're going to confirm that slash user slash local slash bin was successfully added to your path variable. Just type echo dollar path in all caps, space pipe, space grep, 
slash user slash local slash bin exactly as I've typed it here and hit enter. This time you should see it highlighted. It may not be in red. Awesome. That should take care of it. Now let's see how Node.js is working. Hopefully you're getting more and more used to Terminal. Remember, learning to use Terminal really makes you look like a pro. If you're not on the command line already, open it up. Now you need to switch to the chapter one folder. Well, let's pretend I'm in my home folder then. Type cd desktop slash ember intro slash chapter one and hit enter. I put a file in here for you called example.js and we're gonna run that with node. So type node example js and then hit enter. What you've done is started a web server powered by node. You should have what I have on my screen here, server running at HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 81.24. Copy that and paste it into a web browser. If everything's working correctly, you should have the same message I have here. Hello, Node.js. All right, that means Node is working. That's all we have for this video. We're going to use Node to help build our web app, and it's going to be a great help.